Hi guys, this is Andy from Mobile Must Have, and in this video, a slightly different location, as we're here to talk about the Peplink Relay. Now this is a really interesting device that we're gonna do a quick video on today. Um, and it's talking about how we're routing internet traffic if you have home base or someone that can act as a home base for you. Basically this device is going to allow you to connect your mobile peplink unit, so the one you're traveling with, and it's gonna make it look like the internet is coming from this device when you're streaming, when you're on Google, when you're doing anything online. So if you're looking for a way to make your internet traffic always look like it's coming from a single place, this device is doing a good job at kind of solving that problem. There's really two main, well, there's probably more, but two really good examples of this. Uh, one is if you would like to stream channels from back home, wherever that may be, this you can leave um, back at your home base or like I'm gonna be leaving this at my parents' house. And you can then, every time you log into the internet on your RV, regardless of where your RV is, it's gonna make it look like your traffic is coming from here, assuming you have it connected that way. And that can be great for streaming. So if you wanted to get your morning news channels, your evening news channels or any local channels, you can do that now with streaming services if this device is connected. So that can be really handy if local channels and like sports channels and all that stuff is very important to you. Another use case is going to be for anybody that works remotely and doesn't want to have their IP address and their locations kind of move around um, depending on what you do. Some people it's important they have a more kind of stable looking IP for security reasons. This can be another good way of doing that. So if you they let you put this in at the office, um, you could always kind of be coming now in from an office standpoint from your Peplink device. If you have this at a home base and you have your Peplink connected to it, it'll always look like your traffic is coming from that particular modem that you have back at the house. So that can be a really good use case too. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is on your device in your RV that you're traveling with, that will use speed fusion to connect to the relay. That gives you a huge advantage. If you have multiple connections, whether that's Starlink and a 5G connection, like on the BR1 Pro, or you have a duo that's the Cat7 or Cat12 or dual Cat12, and you've got two active data plans in there, you can have both of those or any of those combinations active going up through speed fusion connecting to this wherever you've had it and now be streaming with that one of the big disadvantages to speed fusion um, especially if you're going through the speed fusion cloud is a lot of streaming services will see that as a vpn and block any access um, if you use this and have this as a home base hulu netflix disney plus whatever they'll see it as a regular house or a regular connection and they're not going to block it they don't see this as a vpn uh, so when now we've been in our rv i've been traveling around my location always looks like it's dallas because that's where this is and a streaming and everything works perfectly and it just always assumes we're coming from this dallas house uh, so that has been really, really nice. So I'm still able to use Speed Fusion to get better buffering and better speeds, um, but I'm able to actually stream now because it's not going through a VPN. Now that can be a negative if you don't want all your streaming uh, to take up um, your Speed Fusion, and you can still do that. This is just another option now that works really, really well. Now I wanted to quickly go over the setup of this particular device as it doesn't take too long, but there are a couple different steps and a couple different ways to do that. So I wanna make sure, we're just gonna quickly go over that if you've got any high level questions. Uh, the beginning is all you have to do is plug this into your house and to your network. So you're gonna give it power. And then on the ethernet side, you're gonna plug that directly into a LAN port on your modem as it's taking internet from your, from your house. Um, and that's all you have to do. You've got to wait for the status light to turn green. You know it's going to be online. Then we're going to move to the next step. Now, the next step, there's basically two different ways to do it. I'm going to do it through InControl. That is the cloud-based platform that kind of manages all the devices if they're online. You can, though, do this with a direct connection, Ethernet to your computer. Um, the steps are going to be fairly similar afterwards. But for me, I already have in control set up. Everything's in control. It's going to be easier. Now, if you've done setup 
and device configuration with Mobile Must Have. Your device is already in control, and we can give you access to your group. So if you are interested in that, let us know. Um, if you've already set up your own in control, it'll work just the same as what I'm showing. But uh, if you don't, you can still set up without any control. You just have to hardwire this with an Ethernet cord to your laptop or some device, and then you can uh, remote in that way. The IP address to access this is on the back. One note, though, it does say the password is public. It's actually admin, so it's going to be admin admin if you need that. There's also going to be a full written guide to support this kind of section of this video. So if you've got any questions, reference the guide. I'll put the link in the description below if you've got any questions about that. So I'm using an iPad. Um, you can use a computer. I suggest not a phone, but it does work if, if that's all you've got. From in control, uh, we're going to log into in control and we're going to add the relay to our in control devices. That just takes the serial number. So we're going to punch that in here and you'll see it get added to the list. Now I panicked a little bit at this step as it took a little bit longer than I expected to show up in a online status. I thought I'd missed a step somewhere, but just be patient. For me, it took about five minutes um, for the device to connect to in control. Once it's there, we now have to link the relay to our mobile peplink device we're using as a transit, a BR1 Pro, something like that. Um, first, we need to get the sharing code out of the relay itself. So we're going to remote access in from in control to get that. Here you just go to settings and then your web access here. Um, once that loads, you're going to go to the second tab, which is the Speed Fusion Connect tab. Uh, Speed Fusion Connect Protect tab. Then you're going to see your sharing code there. We need to copy that. We're going to paste it in somewhere later. So copy that or paste it somewhere else on your screen. We're going to need that in a second. Um, once we have that particular link, we're done with this page. We can close this particular tab. And now we're going to go back to in control and remote into our primary device. For me, this is a BR2. But again, it could be your Transit, your BR1 Pro, whatever you're using. Um, and we're going to kind of do the same steps. Remote in. We're going to go to the Speed Fusion Connect Protect tab. And in a different spot, we're actually looking for outbound here. The last one was inbound. This one's going to be outbound. Now, once you've clicked into outbound, we are going to select. Now, I've already set up automatic, so we're going to select this one that's existing. You might have to create a new one. We're going to select on the name. And then we are going to change automatic to sharing relay. That's the second option. Again, you might be starting from scratch, but it will be at the top of the list. Once you select this, you'll see an option to drop in the sharing code and then hit save. Uh, if you are looking at what options we suggest on this page, again, reference the document we have for setting this up um, and we'll walk through kind of what options we suggest on that particular page. At this point, once you hit save, your devices are linked. So everything you need to do is done. Now, the last question is how you want your traffic to be managed. Do you want it going all traffic over um, through the, the relay, you can do that. Do you want to create a new Wi-Fi network? So only devices connected to this new Wi-Fi network are connected, and I think that's gonna be my top recommendation. Or third, which is another decent option, is if you have specific devices you want using, like an Apple TV or a Roku, you can say traffic from this device always goes over. Some devices, I will alert you, might change their MAC address. iPhones are a good example as they have security built into that. Um, but for other devices, the MAC address doesn't really typically change. So that can be a good option for streaming if that's your main purpose here. I like the second option of creating another Wi-Fi that is designated now towards this. You can do that directly in the Speed Fusion Protect tab. You can set up basically the new a new Wi-Fi to go to the cloud, as it says. Um, and follow those steps to that. You can create your own Wi-Fi name, put your own Wi-Fi password in there. Um, this is what we've done too. I basically have a regular network. I have a work network, which goes through a different Speed Fusion data center. And then we have a streaming network, which is set up to basically be designed for streaming and devices go through that. Um, so that would be our recommendation. I will outline those steps in the setup guide as well. All of that is linked below. But just to give you a few options of kind of what to do now that you have it linked and how you might want to accomplish that. Now, if there's more information you would like to know or you have more advanced level questions, yes, I have definitely not hit all the details, but that is a great 
thing to be a member for because you can get access to the RV mobile internet forums. You get access to the webinars that are posted with Eric, our founder, Chris and Cherie from RV Mobile Internet Resource Center, where they go deep dive into all kinds of stuff like this. And they actually have this as the primary topic of the video this week. If you are already a member or are interested in becoming a member and you have questions, they have live webinars where you can ask questions and they go deep into, does this work with InConnect or InTouch? Does this touch like the L2 bands and all kinds of cool things. Uh, if you join that webinar, it's also recorded. So if you want to access it later, you can do that too as a member. Members not just get access to all Merck content and forums and cool stuff like that. You also get faster shipping and discounts, exclusive data plan discounts, exclusive data plans sometimes, all kinds of cool things. Check that out on our membership page. There's a link here to that. You can go to our website and click on the member tab there too if you want to learn more. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and going over the Peplink Relay. If you do have any questions, uh, you can leave a comment below, but I will get back to you faster if you shoot us an email at info at mobilemusthab.com. You can also chat with a real person on our website right on the chat button at the bottom right, and we're happy to talk to you there too. All right, guys. Hope to see you on the road. Bye.